developer. So I guess the, the, the foundation believes in the, the, the whole idea of continuous delivery as in like a, the benefit it brings to the software development. And that's kind of, I guess I see it as a, you know, if you don't believe in the mission, like you, you, know, you shouldn't be a part of this. Right? Um, and then the another part I think is, you know, we should have this, uh, the obvious important mission for the foundation is we should have this ecosystem of open source projects um, and then in order to sustain the growth of that it should be a vendor neutral place um, that facilitates the collaboration and the interviewity and so on and i think you know if you are you already many of you have already been a part of some sort of this open source organization in the past so, so i think you of all the people understand like what this means in the practical terms on the ground um, and then the last bit i think I don't know if we talked about this point explicitly in the past in rounds of this conversation or not, but um, I think it's also important that for us, the practitioners, be able to advocate the ideas of the continuous delivery um, and then among the users so that they can swap nodes, we can all convince our boss that the continuous delivery is an important effort and the efforts that we are spending on is worth spending time on, etc. So that advocacy of the practice you know, not just the software, I think is actually, for me, a very exciting part of the continuous theory function. All right, so, and then, you know, so this work is being done with the Linux Foundation, I guess, again, I think many of you already know what the Linux Foundation do in this space. So they've been pretty successful in building a lot of sub-foundations, creating a, you know, neutral playground between different vendors. Um, so, you know that and really i don't think needs any well further introduction unless you want to specifically talk about it um and um i think there's just a growing rise of the continuous delivery or in fact i guess on the backdrop of the growing importance of software in this space so i think the time is right for this effort um and then there's you know like a lots of uh, cicd tools in this space uh, many of them open source, but like need, not really like you know, right now collaborating or working together. So that's part of the things we mentioned in the past, um, right? So so yeah. So I think um, and then this kind of aligned well with what we've been working on in the Jenkins project, which is to find a good stable home, right? Like a move away from this halfway house between this external perception of. You know, the club is on project to certain people versus us they can not having the um as the more community driven project um so i think that that the, the, what's going on in the broad industry i think it aligned well with what we are looking for um so some of the details that i didn't cover i think in the documents i mean the, in the email that i sent so far as there's like a, in the continuous series foundation we have member you know, members and they are generally, I think, assumed to be a companies that comes in a different tiers, and they, you know, they grant access to a certain level of various, um, I guess, quote unquote, privileges, and then in exchange they pay in the money, um, and then so that forms the budget that allows us to kind of, you know, plan how to spend those. So we don't have to run around like a, trying to secure the next place where the infra budget would come from now that the Microsoft arrangement is going to expire at some point, et cetera. Um, and then, so the Continuous Area Foundation has some like, governance bodies, like the group of people. Um, so the three, I think one, the three of those are particularly worth talking about a little. So the first one is the governing board and it's, um, it's so like I provide the ultimately, I think it provides the oversight to the budget and the money that these companies are paying into. So, you know, it's um, so that's an overall like a big, big picture stuff. Um, and then there's this outreach committee which does these events and other advocacies of the content server in the space. And then the technical group, which is the technical oversight committee, which is around the collaboration, like a coordination of the projects. Um, so those are, I think, the key bodies. Um, and then we currently think of, we are talking to, you know, I guess the three projects at the moment, that's the base, like a high level of commitment, I guess. So the one is like a Jenkins and Jenkins X, I guess, well, it's two. 
Um, and then there's a Google box, the pipeline, CRD, Knative, you know, kind of products. Um, so that's the another one that's I think we have a high confidence on. Um, and then we are talking to, starting to talk to, you know, like Tidal or Time Lane, that's red. Um, part of this is like, you know, we need to start. There's a bit of a chicken and egg problem here in that like we need to build some shape of it before we can approach more people. And then unless we approach more people, we don't know which project can join and so on. So some of these like uh, conversations are happening. I think it really started happening last week, I think. So we are still yet to be adding the process, but um, we hope to gain more projects as we go. Um, and uh, so the one thing I think is worth clarifying, pulling out is, you know, th what this means is, in terms of the changes, it means, like, I think what it means is, like, uh, we'll be moving some of the relations from SPI to CDS. So today, um, the SPI has roles, like, you know, holding assets, uh, you know, dealing with money, etc. cetera. Um, so that's going to switch to um, the uh, Contingency Foundation. Um, and then the uh, SPI, you know, we, we gave some heads up to SPI about this. So they are aware that this conversation is happening. Um, and then I think the other important part to clarify is like a, the like a role of the members, those are you know, primary companies versus contributors, which, you know, who you are. So, you know, contributors in, under the scheme of CDF, you know, just like today, may or may not be from members. Like it's kind of independent from that regard. And then the decision-making structures in this project, you know, these, um, it still largely remains intact. Um, meaning, you know, the JEP, SIGs, um, all the processes we built up so far, or like an implicit way of us doing things, like no change in that. Um, the bar of entry into commitership, et cetera, CLA, we are not expecting any change in there. Um, and then, so just because that, the point that I wanted to reassure is just because like we um, have all this member company now, it doesn't mean like they automatically get to drive the direction of the project or anything like that. So uh, that's the important part of, you know, the making sure that this open source project kind of functions as it is. Um, and then as contributors, um, the, we, we get to elect certain seats into the, some of the aforementioned governance bodies as a kind of voice of the committer, so the voice of the contributors. Um, so that's the additional like a visibility and like a leverage we you know the people in the community get toward this foundation, and the members like what they like where they come in is one so they pay in the annual fees and that forms the budget and you know I talked already about that and then as a part of like a paying in the money, they get to provide some level of oversight about how those money are used. So that's the governance governance board GB part. Um, and then generally, right, being able to sort of raise awareness and advocacy of continuous slavery is sort of seen to seem beneficial to vendors. So you can imagine like a companies like Cloudbees would, would see this angle as a part of the, you know, the part of the reason it's excited about being able to part of this endeavor. Um, and then from end user's perspective, you know, a lot of companies do use these multiple tools together. So being able to kind of have, have them talking to each other and then the uh, end user have some like a forum to voice their thoughts. That's also generally seen as beneficial for the end user companies. So that's another motivation for companies to show up as members. Um, and then there's other like a recruiting other interests that generally encourages people to join. Um, and then the another I think for me the the benefit that's worth calling out is when the big company joins this foundation, like it opens up more, it creates more air cover, it opens up the umbrella for people, engineers in those organizations to spend more time in airports under the umbrella. And so it makes it easier for, for managers to see that this airport is aligned with the other thing these companies are doing. So that I think is gonna play some positive influence on those. Um, and then since, you know, the Rick is here. It's, uh, I, I, I can reiterate that the, I think it, uh, things we can do in China gets a little easier. And I know that's something exciting to you as well. So anyway, that's kind of a quick, quick overview of uh, what's, like what I think largely captured in the email thread. So let's open up the floor here. Um, what's, uh, any any thoughts, questions, opinions? So uh, it looks like we have Chris. So yeah, so that's great. Hi, uh, this is Marky. I, I have a question. 
how will this affect the individual contributors of plugins? Right. So um, I, I don't think it's going, so I'm not currently expecting any changes. Um, so they, the one thing, yeah, so the, almost the way I think of it is like, so we have existing structures in this project, like the core plugins, the developers, and they're like Arrain and all that. You just kind of mostly take it as is and then plug that into the structures into the CDF, where the, so like a, the part that gets connected is what the CDF calls the technical steering committee. And then from the Jenkins speaks, that's the Jenkins board and the officers. So um, I don't really think that impacts anything in the plugin space. Um, but you have some specific, like maybe you want to talk more specific if that's the case, I'm happy to. More, I was just wondering if there would be any change to the the technical direction of a plugin per se, per se, if I have a plugin that I work on or a series of plugins, if the governing body will now be steering the direction of that plugin or will it just sort of become a, much like how the Kubernetes community is built, uh, it just becomes a SIG and you sort of work within that SIG. So, no, it's not, so this won't be like, uh, there'll be somebody else this calling the shot in terms of what should be done in plugins. So it, it is not like that. Um, so it's very much, my expectation is, you know, let's say you maintain, um, I actually don't know what plugin you maintain, but let's say Uli maintains a series of plugins in this like a static analysis space, right? So, and then he basically drives the roadmap. He decides what features to do and what bugs to work on. And that will be the same. Um, what I hope the CDF would be able to provide is like more venues in which like we can get the input from and thoughts from more people. And then if that influences your thinking, that's great. But uh, if not, that's so, you know, that's so, so be it as well. So yeah, I really don't expect like, if your concern is like somebody else is gonna tell you what needs to happen, then it's not gonna be like that. No, that's perfect. Thank you very much. That answers my question. Good. All right. Anything else, Rick? I know you, you must be like, this must be a god awful hour for you. So thank you very much for staying up this late. But um, anything you want to add? Any thoughts? I know you chimed in on that mailing list thread, but. I would have left. Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, I say, do we have a time lag? Oh, timeline. Okay. Um, yeah. So yes and no. So we are working. We are working toward the mid March launch, um, and then so that's the that's all, that's all we are working toward. But ultimately, it kind of depends on like how much interest we can gather. So by the module of that, it's going to be a mid March. So there's a, a Linux Foundation has event called the Open Source Leadership Summit, I believe. And it's uh, in my backyard, so um, practically. So um, if that's the, you know, so that would be a perfect place for us to talk about this in front of the most, you know, companies that's participating into the Linux Foundation. So you know, that would be a great place to kind of encourage more, more, more folks to join. And there's some, you know, uh, yeah, so that's the, that's the timeline. So back into the Jenkins project, um, the one thing that I'm trying to look for is, I mean, so far to the extent that we had a conversation in the dev list, I saw very overwhelming support, uh, but given the magnitude of this, I kind of want to like a record this consensus as a, as a decision um, that, okay, so we collectively decided, you know, we consulted the community, they supported this and we collectively decided that they, this is a move we want to make, and then here's the like a decision log or something like that. Um, so I want to make that happen. I think sometime in February, ideally. So that's okay. maybe another key milestone. They have any concerns about those dates or like other things that you want you'd like to see more done or
Uh, if not, um, uh, any anybody else and any thoughts? What else could we? Uh, what else we could? I could describe that might be helpful. Um, hey, Cascade. Um, yeah, I was gonna make a suggestion that we can maybe introduce Chris and check. And I know Marky mentioned like the Kubernetes SIG, so maybe we could get Chris to yeah, um, yeah. talk about right. kind of how this relates to sort of CNC and mm -hmm. a few people are familiar with. Yeah, how rude of me. Yeah, so uh, please, Chris. <laughs> uh, sure. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Chris Anizek. I have uh, kind of the fun job of uh, both founding and running uh, the CNCF uh, organization, which is the home of Kubernetes, you know, Prometheus, Envoy, and other kind of cloud native projects. So when we were uh, starting up, um, you know, CDF, you know, it was kind of inspired by kind of a lot of the, you know, practices and lessons we learned in CNCF. So, uh, you know, one thing to note is um, generally every Linux Foundation uh, initiative, uh, we separate both kind of business governance and technical governance from each other, right? So there's no like, um, you know, kind of uh, pay to play type, uh, you know, action going on. It's more of members are paying to sustain the overall efforts through like, uh, you know, events, paying for security audits and, and, and so on. So uh, usually the way it works, you know, like in CNCF is each project kind of independently kind of runs on its own. Um, so you'll see the same pattern here where both, you know, Jenkins, Jenkins X, um, Knative, uh, you know, build pipeline will all have their own kind of independent technical um, governance, right? Uh, you know, in the Kubernetes case, it's a little bit more complex since it's a larger project. So like they they completely independently run, but they have their own SIGs that kind of uh, subdivide work, but kind of, you know, run uh, amongst them. But in, in CNCF, the TOC or the kind of the main technical board has no direct, you know, uh, they, they can't tell the projects what to do. They can't tell like Kubernetes, you need to like ship this feature. They, they could do like overall like, hey, you should maybe have like a security audit or something, but they can't actually influence like roadmap or, or anything like that. They could um, have things around improving, you know, what makes an open source project, but you, they can't tell the project necessarily what to do, if, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all uh, ears if, if, if people have any, you know, questions or anything else to, to kind of um, ask, ask, ask me about this. I would like to state that I, uh, I think this is a really awesome opportunity for the Jenkins project, and I'm very excited. Great, thanks. Sorry. Hey, it's Andrew. Uh, I just wanted to clarify a little bit, or try to get clarified a little bit uh, further on the plugins. Mo my understanding is that while some subset of plugins may end up getting managed by the uh, the TSC, uh, like you know plugins that are effectively core, that the overwhelming majority of plugins that are developed by individuals or uh, you know companies doing integrations with other services, et cetera, are not going to be at all controlled by the TSC. They'll have access to the infrastructure and and uh, GitHub repo, et cetera, like they do now. But there's no, there's really no change in terms of their governance and management. Is that correct? Yeah, I think it's the, I mean, right, basically it's an orthogonal axis indeed. I mean, just like today, you know, the Jenkins core developers don't really dictate what's going on in the plugins. There are some collaborations, like suggestions, etc. But that's really what I think primarily what's going to, like what we keep doing in this new world. Uh, there's like an orthogonal conversation about whether like, you know, some of that should shift as you know Andrew as you said like you know there is some interest and thoughts about well maybe you need to take some more critical plugins more seriously etc so those things we've talked about and I think it still makes sense but it's a it's an orthogonal conversation from this idea. Thanks. I have one other question with regards to uh, folding the 
Jenkins into the CDF, uh, will we start working under their infrastructure? Mainly what I more mean, like we'll have a Slack channel, things sort of the way they structure a lot of their, uh, like the CNCF structures, their sandbox projects. I think that's more of a question for Chris. Yeah, uh, I mean, it will depend on how the TOC kind of um, defines uh, project structure. So what I mean here is, uh, I'll give you an example. When CNCF was first founded, there was a bit of a bootstrapping period where the TOC had to be formed, then they kind of came up with the overall process of sandbox incubation and graduation. Uh, I see a similar pattern playing out uh, here once that initial TOC is, is, is bootstrapped. Um, at least from my perspective, I don't have the intimate knowledge of how the Jenkins community is fully, you know, structured. So I'll have to defer to like KK or, or, or someone else. to. Yeah. Um, so my, I think the, the short term, I think, I think everyone is interested. Like I try not to rock the boat too much. So the, you know, for example, today Jenkins project in Pratim kind of takes care of things that it can. And then I expect that to continue the same. Uh, where on that front, I think the key change would be the, the project's budget, Jenkins project's budget is going to get basically get subsumed in the CDX budget. So we'd be able to kind of make sure that the things, well, basically be able to pay off the cost of infra, et cetera. Um, and then yeah, long, but in the long run, I think, well, um, if, I guess then things could evolve like, um, you know, this, keep, I, this, this, this infra work has a scale benefit, right? So, you know, the, if there are some things that the Linux Foundation has already been doing and then it makes sense that, so that we don't need to do separate things in our own infra team, then I think it makes sense to avoid that. So I think those conversations will hopefully unfold in the context of the infra team in the coming days. But uh, that's more of like a, like a longer term thing in my mind. Like it's not gonna be a thing that needs to happen before we decide to join or not. Um, and then the, Chris mentioned about this uh, the sandboxing and so on. So, you know, the, looking at some other foundations the Linux foundations build, like uh, this, they, they, they do create these monitor labels around projects to indicate their general status. And so I think it does apply to say the Jenkins project, the Jenkins X and the, you know, the, uh, uh, pipeline CRD that we mentioned, but I believe the way I think we are not trying to map every individual plugin into its own project in the eyes of the you know CD foundation. So from the plugin developer's perspective, it doesn't I, I don't think the moniker is going to make much of a difference. Um, if anything, I think it's um, more for the overall Jenkins project and the Jenkins X project. To meet certain bar of the governance, like you know, um, that's the that's the work. And in some sense, like we've been doing that work all along, so it just creates a bit more explicit bar and criteria to march toward. Yeah, I'd just like to just add to to that specifically on whether conversations happen, whether that's Slack or not. I think it will continue to be dictated by where the community is talking. So Jenkins, you know, that will be IRC and we're seeing a lot more in Gitter these days and Jenkins X, they have conversations in the Kubernetes Slack. Um, so that's not something that will get dictated. That's, you know, up to the community and where they want to have their conversations and we expect in the short term um, that will, that won't change. Personally, I, I don't mind us using this opportunity to get off from IRC. That's my two cents. Uh, yeah, good times. Yeah, every 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 communication medium has its has its problems. <laughs> but yeah, as Tracy said, it's. Uh, my, my question is: Do we have uh, next step or actions, and uh, how how I can how or other contributor can do for the CDF? No. Right, because, right, I think you're, you're interested in like, you know, part of these CD foundation, yeah. in, in, like doing some work in that space. So yeah, I think it's good to, I, I mean, you have, I think now you're talking to Chris, so I think that's the great fourth step. Um, 
So there's that side of the conversations. And then there's this other side of like a what we, the Jenkins project, should do as a next step. Um, I guess that, that's kind of like maybe it's a good way to turn the table around a little. And what, what should we, let's say, the leadership the community needs to be doing? I mean, the, um, again, like I, you know, the only key milestone for me is like basically the end state, which is to, to build, to record some, like a, you know, to do some ceremony or formality to record this consensus and decision. But I want to make sure that like, it comes across as a natural step, not something forced upon people. Um, so the, there are, like, you know, this q and A is a part of that. The email thread was part of that. But if you feel like, you know, like try to picture other people in your shoes, and if you feel like they need more, more information, more venue, more something before people feel comfortable, like, us placing this decision, then I'd love to know those. So if not, I think the one thing I want to do at some point, and Chris, I, I, I almost thought about writing to you just shortly before this call is, like at some point, I, I do want to be able to share the charter document. Yeah, it's yeah. Community. yeah absolutely. I think uh, we have another week or so to get kind of final feedback, and then it'll be in its kind of finalized um, yeah. form. Yeah. So, um, I think that would I think that would help for people to kind of wrap their heads around. Um, so that yeah, no problem. I mean, it's it's it'll kind of be boring like other Linux. <laughs> you can look at the CNCF one as an example. It's not super exciting, but kind of codifies the structure, values, etc. How things work. Right. Right. Chris, maybe I can ask one question. So we've got this growing community in China. Um, so maybe can you speak to how the Linux Foundation would be able to help Jenkins expand in China and, mm -hmm. and do more there? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, we actually have a, a legal entity all set up there. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you've ever gone through the experience of uh, getting business done in China, but there's this complicated like ICP license that you have to do in order to register like uh, a WeChat handle for Jenkins and manage it properly. Uh, we could do events. Um, you know, one option for the Jenkins community and kind of the CDF community in general is we have uh, Open Source Summit China or KubeCon China. You're more than happy to do like a co-located event there if you want to do kind of grow the community there. But uh, we have all the legal things in place to do uh, events, uh, social media type uh, handles, registrations, websites, uh, etc. cetera. Okay. So, um if uh, if anything I can help, please let me know. Awesome, we'll, we'll, we'll do. You know, I, I think one, okay. one thing I'll, I'll be kind of blunt with folks is like there's, there's always a bit of kind of like a bootstrapping period where you're just kind of getting the thing, you know, up and running and operational. So, uh, you know, uh, just please expect that. It takes a while to kind of bootstrap this to get it fully, uh, fully operational. All right. Well, I guess if, um, if, no, if nothing else, I guess it's on the 30 minutes mark, so we could call it the wrap or I'd... Yeah, I just wanted to thank uh, KK and Tracy and Chris and everybody else who's been involved in getting this ball rolling and uh, all, all the work that you guys have been doing. So thank you very much for your for, for getting this all in yeah, process. And then uh, yeah, Tyler, I think this is a he's he's also like a key key part of getting this going. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cool. All right. Then uh, I guess you know we'll keep talking about this. Um, so thanks for um, thanks for uh, being a part of this. Especially Rick, I know again like in your time in your time zone, this is a crazy hour. So. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate that, and uh, I'll talk to you in. Uh, I'll talk to you in, in some other place, and see you soon. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye -bye.